Hello everyone, this is Toby with Birdsong Studios. How are you doing today? Welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. I greatly ap appreciate your time, your energy, your attention, and your openness to these messages. Um, today we will be looking at the zodiac signs uh, grouped by element for the full moon in Leo, which is occurring on February the 5th, or possibly 6th, depending on where you are in the world. Um, it will be square Uranus, actually it will be a T-square with the moon and the sun and Uranus. So that can bring in certainly some energies or events that are unexpected and um, can be highly charged is what I'm getting. So I'm getting this kind of lightning energy around that. Um, it may be something that you actually experience in the physical and it may be something that you're feeling internal. Um, the full moon brings in kind of closures and um, resolution around them and clarity um, with the the lighting up or the highlighting of certain areas. So um, you may be getting sensations or um, feelings or even experience things around those, those um, type of energies. So we're going to start with the fire signs today. This will be for Aries, Sagittarius, Leo in Sun, Moon, Rising placements. In addition to the square to Uranus, there will be an opposition between Venus and Mars preceding the full moon about 12 hours ahead of time. That can certainly bring in some tension um, as kind of have a, an opposition between divine feminine and divine masculine is the way it's feeling to me right now. So um, just be aware of that. Um, and it may be a time to make sure you're focusing on the pause before there are any reactions that could bring forth some conflicts, especially in, in relationship areas, whether it's uh, interpersonal relationships of any type. So we're starting with the Life Soul Vision Oracle here by Romy Weiser to give us the overall energy for fire signs for the full moon in Leo. And we have the guide and the gift and I'm really drawn to this portal here on the card. See the doorway there. Um, And with the horse, um, a real sense of freedom and moving forward. Um, but also this, again, the sense of pause as she's waiting. The figure is waiting. Um, she, I feel, is also indicative of your guides. Um, and this energy of freedom and manifestation as well. So what, being very conscious and aware of what is guiding you? Is it your higher self? Um, as you are bringing forth new ideas and in this energy of kind of closure before we really step into what I feel is going to be the new year for 2023 with the spring equinox. And so in the, in the weeks preceding that, what energy are you in? What, um, what are you manifesting for your life in? And um, okay, I'm sorry. What are you manifesting and taking a look at more deeply where, what is guiding you in those manifestations? So are, are you being guided by your higher self, by your spirit guides, by um, guardian angels, by the ancestors, by ascended masters, by cosmic family, or are you being guided by, um, are you being guided by your intuition, by your own inner knowing <clears throat> that is sovereign, <clears throat> excuse me, and is wanting to be spoken, um, that is wanting to be heard? Are you being guided by elements of the 3D? Are you being guided by the fear, the chaos, the um, 
division, the disruption that is going on in the external world. So being very clear as to where you're being guided before you make a choice as to what doorway you walk through. Okay, so that's where we're going to start. Um, next we're going to go to the tarot and we're going to do um, a version of a spread I created that is um, we have the balance of the light and shadow and then yin and yang. So the way that I interpret this um, is we'll have what's what you need to know about the light, what you need to know about the shadow, what's, and I've got it backwards here, but what, um, what you need to surrender to as far as yin energy and where you need to take action as far as yang energy, okay? So we'll probably pull... Um, we'll just see what comes out. If it's only one per area, then we'll go with that. It may be more. So first we're looking at um, what you need to know about the light or where the light energy can be found for you around this time of the full moon. Four fire signs, please, Spirit. Fire signs, please, Spirit. Justice. I saw that as I was doing shuffling earlier. That really came. Um, it was at the split, and it was I was really drawn to it. So um, we have justice in the light energy. Let's see what we have in the shadow. Do we have the shadow energy for fire signs, please, Spirit. Justice, of course, speaks. It's uh, card 11. Um, it is associated with um, bringing things back into balance with um, the sign of Libra. So it may be connected to something that occurred for you, is what I'm hearing, um, or to you or around you in Libra season which would be the end of September through late October. And where you can find justice in that situation or balancing in that situation. And it requires, um, it does require a bit of surrendering to that. And um, I'm getting surrendering to your inner knowing and to your intuition with that. See how the figure has her eyes closed? And in the shadow, we have the Six of Wands. The Six of Wands speaks of victory, but I'm getting a sense of victory at what cost. So if we have in the light justice and we have in the shadow um, the Six of Wands, that's not working very well, is it? I need more space. Sorry, these cards are kind of big. Let me put it right here. Um, now you can kind of see that. Um, so... so you guys can see it better. There we go. Okay. So if we're uh, being called to look at this rebalancing, to look at, and I believe this is speaking to um, what we talked about initially with this overall energy of the guide and the gift. What are you being guided by? And when you're t um, tapping into your inner knowing and your intuition as to where there's balance in this situation, where there's balance in what you're what you're manifesting, what you're wanting to step into next through this portal. Are you doing so from a place of winning at all costs? Or are you doing so from a place of connection to your higher self and being guided by what is in alignment with your highest good? So uh, again, this um, sense of winning at all costs, um, that just keeps coming up. A victory at all costs, it does not matter what the cost is. So um, being really aware that that energy is around in um, the shadow aspect of 
this balancing of this this time of decision around what you're manifesting and which portal you do want to move through. Okay, so now we're going to look at the yin and yang and what we're what needs uh, or be invited to surrender to and where we're being invited to take action. Okay, this is for fire signs, Aries, Sagittarius, Leo, Sun, Moon, and Rising Priest Spirit. If you're getting a sense of tension around this Six of Wands. And so there's an indicator for you as well. If you are moving in a certain direction, even if your thoughts are moving in a certain direction when it's around this manifestation that you're working on, if you get this sense of tension, that's your physical cue. It's not in alignment with your highest self. It's not a balanced perspective. Okay, so this is what we are surrendering to, and they told me to leave that one flipped over for now, so let's get the one uh, for the Yang energy and where we're being invited to take action. would be the Empress and here we have the Divine Feminine coming into surrendering into this creative energy to this the bountifulness and the ability that you have within you within the Divine Feminine energy to create from a sense from a state of flow from a state of oneness with all that is around us where we have the, are being invited to take action, we have Mercury, which is, it, this is actually Mercury and Aquarius. Um, and this is Venus energy. I don't know if I said that already, but this is the Six of Swords, and that's moving away from conflict. It's moving to calmer waters. It's um, Again, it feels like I'm really drawn to the water in this card and um, and then the flow that we we're speaking about with the Empress. So here we have the Empress. She is, I'm getting in this card, she is the Divine Mother. She is um, the embodiment of Mother Gaia. I mean, even in down here, she doesn't have a body. There, it's uh, trees and uh, a tree trunk and the base of the tree and the root system so she's um, intimately connected to Mother Earth and so this is the en energy that is within each of us then this is what we're you're being asked asked to surrender to at this time fire signs and where you're needed and by doing so, it will become clear to you what you need to move away from. And it doesn't require, and I'm getting this sense of quiet with this card, it doesn't require a lot of fanfare. It doesn't even require any sort of verbal statement because I'm looking at the mask. It's just of the, the figure here. It's being guided by spirit. We have two swans on here on the on the boat just as they're often indicated um, on the two of cups which to me can symbolize two people but can also symbolize connection with your higher self. So and there's this state of balance. See how the swords are so perfectly balanced and they're equal on it on either side of the boat and then we have the balance and the two swans, it goes back to the justice. So allowing yourself to be guided by your higher self, be guided by the Empress, by the Creator within you, by the Divine Mother, in knowing 
what you need to move away from in order to manifest from a balanced state. And that again, that goes back to what's guiding you. So that's where your action would be. Um, okay, so now we're going to look at, um, I'm gonna use another deck so we have the option to have duplicates come out if that's what's best for the message. So we're now going to look at um, key factors internally and key factors or players externally. Okay, we'll get a couple cards for each of those as well. So just as a reminder, we have here the overall energy in the guide and the gift. In the light, we have the justice card, which is number 11. In the shadow, we have the six of wands for our yin energy. We have the number three, the empress and yang energy. This is what, we, what we're being invited to surrender to. Where we're being invited to take action would be the six of swords, which is Mercury and Aquarius. This one's wanted to come out. Okay, and we're looking at internal factors. Internal factors, please. For the fire signs, for the full moon and Leo. Aquarius is the opposite to Leo and the Zodiac. And it is a, an air sign, so it's going to be a more mental approach than, um, and it goes back to, it may be a matter of moving away from certain thought forms, which we talked about in the guide. What is guiding you in your manifestation process? more so than it is and that that is an act that is an active process to move away from certain thought forms or patterns but it doesn't have to be one that you necessarily express with anyone else it doesn't have to be one that again comes with a lot of fanfare or um overtness to it oh we have the high priestess beautiful and again that speaks to that inner knowing And I've never noticed this before, but on this card for the High Priestess, there's a J and a B. And I'm not sure what that represents on the card, but it's very interesting I'm drawn to that. Okay, one more card for internal factors at play here. factors internally, please. I'll get one more and I'll turn them around so that you guys can see them. Uh, page of Wands. Okay. I'm getting this sense of with the Page of Wands. Of course, we have fire energy here again. The Knight of Pentacles, we have earth energy. The Knight of Pentacles is, it's the slowest of the knights. Um, and the knights indicate movement. But the Knight of Pentacles is, I always, I get this energy of, it's, it's steadfast. It's um, consistent. It's intentional in the seeds that are being planted. It's intentional in what is being created in the tangible world. Um, and again, that goes back to what we talked about, about what is guiding you. Um, and so being intentional with that is going to be making, um, really tapping into that energy within you tapping into your high priestess, the one, um, your 
metaphysical gifts, esoteric gifts, your ability to communicate and know intuitively, but also um, trusting in any psychic visions or um, thoughts or clear audience that you're receiving through this time is going to be really important. Those are not, um, they're not random. They are not things that you're making up. They are there. They are gifts for you to help guide you through this process. I also get this sense of, with this Page of Wands, there is this new idea, but I almost feel like this could be a bit of a distraction type energy. Okay, so here's the key. Knight of Pentacles. <clears throat> here's the High Priestess, excuse me. See the J and the B up here on top of these pillars? So these, those may be meaningful to you in some way. Um, here's the Knight of Wands. I'm sorry, not Knight, it's the Page of Wands. So pages are young, something that's new. Um, I just get this sense that we have two cardinals here which speak to me of um, guides or ancestors, um, spirits who have transitioned, oh, souls who have transitioned over are now guiding you from the other side and I get the sense that they're asking you to be very balanced again in your approach with these new ideas. Take the Knight of Pentacles energy and combine that with the High Priestess to see if these new ideas are building towards what you're working on with the Knight of Pentacles or if this is a way to distract yourself from that process and be more impulsive and um, impatient, I'm getting as well. Okay, so let's look at key factors externally and then we'll, I think we'll wrap this up, but let's see what what we have for key factors. This can be situations, events, people that are external that will be impacting you at this time or may be impacting you at this time. stomach growling. <laughs> key factors for fire signs. Key external factors for fire signs will be a full moon, please, spirit. There it is again. It's kind of wanting to come out and not wanting to come out. Oh, I see. Seven of Swords. Okay. Let's get one or two more. So there's something that maybe you're not seeing, something that's going on behind the scenes, something that someone is attempting to get away with in the external reality. We have the Queen of Pentacles. That Seven of Swords wanted to come out, but it didn't want to come out. So it is something that I think is going to be brought to light. It may be... I'm getting this Queen of Pentacles as a person, so it may be associated with an Earth sign, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. You, with the Fox on this card, though, you have the wisdom to see through this to see what's actually going on. get a bit of a slyness about this king, Queen of Pentacles over here. And with the peacock being shown, I get also this sense of um, all that glitters is not gold. So that's where this um, slyness and uh, a little bit of deception is coming between the Seven of Swords 
and the Queen of Pentacles. So if you're being made an offer um, in regards to something tangible, um, something in the 3D, a um, financial, something around work, finances, your home, your your physical, tangible in environment. Um, use your wisdom to discern um, and to help you see what is not being shown forthrightly. Again, this <clears throat> goes back to what is guiding you and using your, um, this was where I think because they came up in the same in the same spot. You have the, the high priestess in the same spot on opposite ends on what's guiding you internally or key factors internally and key factor factors externally so I think you're going to get some psychic visions or hits or knowing around this situation here's the see the fox on the center of the swords down here the fox sees what's going on and that's your wisdom and that's your inner knowing here's the Queen of Pentacles this the expression on her face is that slyness I was mentioning. Um, and then we have the King of Pentacles. And honestly, I feel like this is more representative of you, Fire Signs. Um, because this is... This is um, Ah, because this is an external factor, I feel that this is um, the energy that you will embody in this situation. That you'll come from a very grounded and solid place, um, one where you are sure of your own stability and security and abundance and so whatever this queen is offering that seems so shiny and gold you'll be able to see through the facade of that and it will not impact the what you have already created what you've already grown see how he's sitting on this this throne of this um a tree trunk almost in the roots it goes reminds me of the Empress too. see how similar those cards are so yes this um, you're I feel like you're really going to see through this um, but it is going to again require you to the King of Pentacles is very tapped into nature um, very grounded energy and so and one who is methodical is what I'm getting as well so not being impulsive not being presumptuous but giving yourself a moment to here's that pause to surrender into the inner knowing to know what to move away from and again, it doesn't have to be in a um, confrontational way, but just quietly moving away from it if that's what feels best for the situation, knowing with a surety that, that you're making the right decision for yourself. This could be where this Six of Wands is coming in too, because there's an offer potentially coming in but you're not seeing all of it and it may seem really shiny and really wonderful and be all the things <clears throat> that you were looking for <clears throat> excuse me however you have all that you need already there's some a bit of patience that's required and com consistency because this um, triumph, taking this path to triumph is going to have a cost. Okay, 
so I'm going to leave the reading there. I hope this was helpful for you as you are moving through the energies of the full moon in Leo coming up this weekend. Um, as always, thank you so much for being here. I greatly appreciate your time, your attention, your openness to these messages, your likes, your shares, your comments, subscribing to the channel. Those all, all help me immensely and um, encourage me to keep going as well. So thank you so much for those. Um, if you're interested in a personal reading, the information to contact me in regards to those, as well as um, other aspects of my work are listed below in the description box. You can find it on the website and I will be back very soon with the other elements, water, earth, and air to, con to finish out this series. Thank you so much. Have a great day.